down some and back just a little. Okay, that's good. Mark. You're rolling. Yes. Okay, <clears throat> I'd like to just start, if you can uh, state your name. Yes, uh, Ron Ikejiri. Mm -hmm. And the date, so that when we're logging, we know what, what date. Today you know. is November 28, <laughs> 2015. Okay. And we're in Los Angeles. Yes. <clears throat> okay, I'd like to know, um, when did you first meet uh, Minor Yasui? I had the opportunity to meet uh, Min Yasui for the first time in 1978 and it probably was in July and it was probably in Salt Lake City but I knew it was on top of the mountain at Park City and I had the opportunity to first meet him and for me it was a quite an experience because you know all through growing up and certainly through law school you would read the name of uh, Min Yasu and you said gee you finally have a chance to, to meet this person that uh, had done so much. Okay so in answer to the question did you know about him before you met him the answer is yes what was your first impression? Was it what you expected? And in general, what was your interaction, your first it impression? It was actually much more than I expected uh, when I first met him. I was impressed by, uh, I think there's a razor edge to his thinking. Mm -hmm. And he just came across as being very, uh, not only open, but very concise. Mm -hmm. And I said, no wonder he was able to come up with the courage to do what he did uh, during the early part of World War II and test the constitutionality. And I often wondered, uh, thinking about it, I said, yeah, this is what it takes. And I don't know if I had that same courage that he would have had, especially at that time of war. What kind of work did you do uh, with Min Yasui? When and where? Okay, I, um, in 19, July of 1978, I had the opportunity to be appointed to the Washington representative of the Japanese American Citizens League. And at that time, uh, right when we started, there was a convention in Salt Lake City. And at that convention, they made a decision to go ahead um, forward with action on finding a remedy for the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. And the discussion, and that was probably, it's been building up for a number of years, uh, probably ever since the internment, but certainly uh, in the early 70s. And finally, at the 78 convention, that's when the decision was made to, to go ahead and going forward with redress. What was it like? Did you actually work uh, with Min Yasui, or was it more your work was with, with JCL, and he also, of course, was associated with JCL? Did you have personal interaction with yeah. Min Yasui? The uh, great experience that I had when I was 28 years old and being a young lawyer, uh, to be able to work with people like Min Yasui, and Min would come into Washington, D.C. probably every other month, and I had the chance to sit down and talk to him, and I would learn from him, and I'd have disagreements with him. And, but the nice thing about uh, Min is that he always had an idea or an opinion. It may sometimes have been a, a way to prod you to do something, or it may have been a way to prod you to think another, another way. And uh, just the experience with Min uh, at that time uh, during the late uh, 70s was just a really a wonderful opportunity, especially for civil rights. Can you expand on that? Um, what kind of disagreements did you have? Oh, we had a lot of disagreements, mainly on procedure, on what the process, what was going to happen. I think in Japanese, um, the word is called atarimai, and atarimai basically means it's already understood. We know that this happened, and Min's approach was that the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II obviously was unconstitutional. And it should not have happened, particularly to citizens that were American citizens. And the legislation at that time, in the formulation stage, during those first few years, was how do we approach Congress? And what would be the best way to approach it? You had a number of groups within the Japanese American community regionally. Some said we should just directly have a bill that goes into Congress. Uh, requesting that there be an apology and individual payments for the incarceration and coming up with a certain dollar amount or number. The other part about it was that certain people wanted to uh, not even have uh, that kind of approach and legislatively the four members of the Japanese American uh, delegation you know, to Congress, Senator Inouye, Senator Matsunaga, Norman Mineta, and Bob Matsui, 
all agreed that there would probably be a better way in having a presidential commission, a fact-finding presidential commission, to have the basis for having a recommendation to Congress to do some form of uh, redress. And people ask why. why. Why do you have to do it if it's atarimai, if we all understand that? And I think the, there's a variety of reasons, but the principal one is this. You know, Senator Inouye and Senator Matsunaga are two members, happen to be from Hawaii, well respected. And then there's another Japanese American who is actually Canadian Japanese American, Senator Hayakawa. Senator Inouye wasn't about to argue in front of the entire U.S. Senate the merits of redress, the merits of the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II have a disagreement with three members of the Japanese American delegation in the Senate. He said, by all means, then, the other 97 senators would said, okay, when you decide the course to go, then we'll get involved. And he wanted to avoid that because it would be very destructive. And at that time, uh, it was very, very clear that Senator uh, Hayakawa, uh, being extremely conservative and not having lived through that internment experience in America, uh, had no desire or belief that there needs to be some form of redress or an apology. That's very interesting. So Minyasui was not in agreement with the commission approach? Well, I think uh, basically for uh, when I would sit down with Min, I think the biggest, he, he understood the obviously the judicial approach and that would be continuing. But we were looking more in terms of legislatively that in order to overturn the, the weight of what happened constitutionally, we believe that a public law need to be passed to uh, correct it. And in order to do that, and one of the parts that, uh, and it's not a question of impatience, it's probably a question of process, and that process is very simple. I think judicially, you know, we have a very clean-cut system in our government. They're all three parts. The part that's very difficult to understand is the other two parts, and that is the administration, which is the White House, and Congress and the Senate. And the reason for that is that, yes, in our democratic representative government that we're all taught about, that you know this is a great system, and it is a very good system. What we don't know as lay people, regular people that do not live within the Beltway in Washington, D.C., that there's only two driving forces that are gonna motivate a politician or a legislative person. And one, uh, once you become a politician, you have two objectives, you know, to get elected and to get reelected. And that always was the difficulty in terms of redress from, from day one uh, until it did pass. And it's a matter of getting that kind of consensus together. And the difference is probably with, certainly within the Japanese American community because the Issei, the first generation, we're, we're becoming uh, now, you know, 40, 50 years after the fact, becoming closer to the 80s and 90s and 95-year-old. And the time was running short in terms of doing something meaningful in terms of an apology and some form of redress. And so the differences probably was more procedure. It wasn't idea, uh, the idea behind it. It's how do we get there? And I know uh, those differences really sometimes I, and I, now thinking back, you kind of wonder why, and maybe I was too young to know otherwise, because I was 28, but I remember one time men and I just got into it at the JCL office, and our office was on the second floor of this building, and it's actually, uh, thank goodness it was an old office building, and those offices uh, had these cantilevered kind of windows, and they didn't open all the way, because if the, if the window opened all the way, one of us would have been landing on the ground over there on M Street. Um, with no question. But what I really enjoyed about Min is that he would challenge you. He would challenge you uh, mentally, and uh, that one time has probably almost challenged us uh, physically, which is kind of, kind of a, a fun thing to do with Min. So how did you resolve your differences with, with Min Yasui? You don't resolve your differences with Min. I think what happens is that uh, 20 minutes later, an hour later, the next phone call, it's as if it didn't happen. We move on. Uh, Min was not someone to hold grudges, but I think Min was not one to forget. And so I think it's a mutual, and I think a lot of it, what the people loved about Min is that he would just challenge you. 
and he would make, and I would say that he would make everyone that he came in contact with better, or challenge them to become better. Mm -hmm. And that is very, a very unique kind of uh, character to have. And those that were able to meet him, I'm sure everyone will tell you that there were times they disagreed with him in, in ways that uh, could not be obviously uh, described properly. However, uh, you're very fortunate, and certainly now as I look backwards, how lucky I am to be able to work with someone like Min. Because working with Min Yasui and working with people like uh, Mike Masaoka, you know, probably two of the, the strongest uh, lightning rods within the Japanese American community for action. And then having the opportunity at the same time to work with Senator Tinoa, Senator Matsunaga, and certainly uh, Norman Mineta uh, in working on redress. It, it was just a tremendous uh, experience. And to watch Nisei and then younger Sansei, or Nisei and a half, and looking at those people that uh, served in the 442nd, and those that served in the